In a world where athletes are often defined by a single sport, Sonny Bill Williams stands as a remarkable exception. He's a man who defied expectations and transcended boundaries. This is the story of Sonny Bill Williams, a double international, a two-time Rugby World Cup champion, a boxing champion and a walking headline. From the gritty streets of Auckland to the hallowed halls of rugby and boxing, Sonny's journey is a testament to the power of human spirit and the limitless potential of the individual. Sonny Bill Williams was born in Auckland, New Zealand on the 3rd of August 1985 to Samoan father John, who is an accomplished rugby league player, and mother Lee, who is a talented athlete. Sports were in his blood. Young Sonny excelled in everything he tried, from football to athletics. However, it was on the rugby league field that his talent truly shone. Sonny played for his local team Morris Saints as a junior when he was spotted playing in Auckland by Bulldogs talent scout John Ackland. In 2002, he was offered a contract with their junior side and at just 16 years old, he signed with the Canterbury Bankstown based Bulldogs, thus making him the youngest player to ever sign with an NRL club. Sonny was so committed to this dream that while training professionally, he worked full time as a labourer. He advanced up the ranks quickly, becoming a starting player in the forward pack for the side in his first season. And the following year, he had cemented his position in the side. Things continued to get better as in 2004, still only 18 years old, Sonny made his NRL debut for the Bulldogs. After only a handful of NRL games, Sonny was selected by New Zealand and on the 23rd of April made his debut for the Kiwis as their youngest ever test player against Australia. He featured in 15 matches for the Bulldogs that season, where he scored 4 tries, as the side won the NRL championship, coming off the bench as they beat the Sydney Roosters 16 points to 13 in the grand final. Oh, it's just crazy. Hey, what about this, huh? Can you believe it? Hey, it's awesome. With his contract due to expire at the end of the upcoming season in 2005, Sonny received several offers to lure him away from the Bulldogs, but in the end, he decided to sign on for a further two years. Williams' 2005 season would be short-lived after he sustained a knee injury and several minor injuries, causing him to play only five games throughout the year. Sonny would be back to his best in the 2006 season, as in 21 matches, he scored his highest tally of his career thus far with 8 tries. However, off-season surgery forced Williams to miss the Tri-Nations for New Zealand for the second consecutive year. Ahead of the 2007 season, speculation surrounding Williams' playing future ended when he re-signed with the Bulldogs on the 9th of March 2007 on a 5-year contract worth over $2.5 million, extending through to the 2012 season. He featured for New Zealand in the 2007 Anzac Test and ended the NRL season with a pretty solid 14 tries and 21 appearances for the Bulldogs. Unfortunately, Sonny wouldn't be able to replicate that form in the postseason as during the semi-final, Williams broke his forearm in a tackle, which also saw him ruled out for New Zealand in the postseason. But despite all this, Sonny Bill Williams was starting to become a household name. If you hadn't heard of him before, you definitely knew who he was now. The following season would be a disaster for the Bulldogs. They went from 6th the season prior to dead last in 16th. Despite this, Sonny would score 5 tries, but midway through the campaign, he would make a shocking decision that no one saw coming. Despite only being 18 months into a 5 year contract with the Bulldogs, in July of 2008, Sonny Bill Williams switched codes leaving his familiar world of rugby league to join French-based rugby union side Toulon. It was a defiant debut for Toulon's star recruit. This move Sonny was Bill definitely Williams controversial to say the least. Rugby league fans felt betrayed, while rugby union purists questioned his ability to adapt to the demands of the 15-man game. When asked why he left, Williams cited salary cap concerns for his move. This was a somewhat growing problem for the NRL as their salary cap restrictions were beginning to prove problematic in trying to keep top grade players in rugby league. But what made Sonny's move even more shocking was that his former side the Bulldogs club officials and players weren't even notified of his departure until he'd already left for France. 
and as a result of him leaving so early into his contract, Toulon were forced to pay a transfer fee of around 750,000 Australian dollars. With his first season over, Sonny would go on to shock everyone again when on the 27th of May 2009, he made his debut as a professional boxer on the undercard of close friend Anthony Mundine, where he stopped his opponent with ease, winning by a technical knockout in the second round. The rest of his time in Toulon wasn't too memorable as his highest honour was finishing runner-up in the 2009-10 European Challenge Cup. With his contract set to expire in June of that year, Williams rejected Toulon's contract approach of a three-year, six million dollar deal, reportedly the largest in rugby union history at the time. Instead, he opted to sign with the New Zealand Rugby Union in a bid to play for the All Blacks, joining Canterbury in the ITM Cup and the Crusaders in Super Rugby. Bill Williams has claimed a second straight victory that summer, on the 30th of June 2010, he won his next fight by TKO after only 2 minutes and 35 seconds. Sonny described his preparation for the fight as good off-season training, ahead of his debut for Canterbury the next season. On the 3rd of September, Williams made his Canterbury debut and a few weeks later scored his first try in an ITM Cup loss to Taranaki. The next month, Canterbury claimed the Ranfurly Shield and on the 5th of November, they were crowned ITM Cup champions. But only a few weeks prior to this, he'd received the news he had been dreaming of up to this point. On the 17th of October, Williams was named in the All Black squad to tour Hong Kong and the Northern Hemisphere. He made his highly anticipated debut at Twickenham against England on the 6th of November. He'd done it, he had become an All Black. And to top that off, a week later, Williams was awarded Man of the Match for his performance against Scotland. Before the start of the 2011 Super Rugby season, Sonny would return to the ring on the 29th of January, where he beat Australian fighter Scott Lewis by unanimous decision. And on the 4th of March, Williams made his Super Rugby debut for the Crusaders against the Waratahs, scoring a try and setting up another. By the end of May, Williams had scored 5 tries in just 9 appearances. He carried this great form back into the ring, where he once again won by unanimous decision, defeating Tongan fighter Ali Pate Liava in his home city of Auckland. On his return, he would score his 5th try of the campaign, as the Crusaders made it to the Grand Final, which they lost to the Reds. Sonny ended a fantastic debut Super Rugby campaign with the most offloads and the top 10 for try assists. That July, Williams would be called up for the All Blacks once again for the 2011 Tri Nations. On the 9th of September, he featured in the 2011 Rugby World Cup, scoring three tries off the bench as the All Blacks went on to win the tournament. At the end of the following month, on the 31st of October, Williams embarked on a new adventure, joining the Hamilton-based Chiefs for the 2012 Super Rugby season. Sonny's unbeaten streak in the ring remained intact when he beat the American fighter Clarence Tillman III by TKO in just 2 minutes and 58 seconds. On the 25th of February, Williams made his 2012 Super Rugby debut for the Chiefs against the Highlanders. Williams scored 5 tries as the Chiefs went all the way, being the Sharks in the Super Rugby Grand Final. Sonny was truly impressive that season, being one of the league's standout performers. This was evident as he was awarded the Chiefs Players Player Award. But despite all this, he would once again shock the rugby world when on the 9th of July, he announced he would be playing for the Panasonic Wild Knights in the Japanese Top League during the 2012-13 season with the allowance to have one boxing fight during the season. At the time, this one season deal was thought to have been the largest one season contract in rugby union history, with many speculating that this could be due to the heavy promotion of the 2019 Rugby World Cup, which was taking place in Japan. Williams' time in Japan wouldn't be too memorable as he only made 7 appearances after sustaining an injury when he landed awkwardly on his shoulder following a tackle. Just 17 days after this incident, on the 13th of November 2012, 
Williams confirmed he would be returning to Rugby League. After signing a one-year deal with the Sydney Roosters for the 2013 NRL season. Before his long-awaited rugby league return, Williams returned to the ring where he beat South African fighter Francois Botha via unanimous decision to claim the WBA international heavyweight title. On the 7th of March, Williams made his debut before a record first round crowd and television audience where he scored his first try. Sonny would score a further 7 tries that season as the Roosters went on to claim the Premiership that season. Subsequently, he was announced as the Roosters Player of the Year and agreed to stay for another season. That summer, he featured for New Zealand in the 2013 Rugby League World Cup where he scored 3 tries as they lost to Australia in the final but he was awarded the Rugby League International Player of the Year award for his performances. His second season with the Roosters wouldn't be as successful as a string of injuries saw him sidelined as the team lost in the preliminary final. But despite this, Williams didn't rule out a return to the Roosters in the future. On the 20th of December 2013, Williams announced his return to Rugby Union with the Chiefs on a two year deal starting in 2015. In 2014 he featured for Counties Manuko in the ITM Cup and won another boxing match by unanimous decision. On the 14th of February, Williams returned and made an instant impact but the Chiefs would lose to the Highlanders in the quarterfinals. That summer, Williams would be called up for the All Blacks once again for their summer tests and in late August was named in New Zealand's 31-man squad for the 2015 Rugby World Cup. The All Blacks were going to retain their crown making it back-to-back -back World Cup wins for Sonny. Prior to the Rugby World Cup on the 19th of August, Williams decided to commit to Rugby Sevens full-time following the Rugby World Cup and leading up to the Olympics in an effort to make the final squad. And he'd do just that, being selected for the 2016 Olympic squad when New Zealand finished in 5th place. Following the end of his time with the Chiefs, Williams joined his hometown Auckland based Blues. In his first season, Williams delivered a man of the match performance to help the Blues defeat the British and Irish Lions 22 points to 16. Sonny would be caught up for the All Blacks yet again as he played in 13 tests in 2017. Williams would miss a large portion of the 2018 Super Rugby season due to injury but returned for the All Blacks in the 2018 Rugby Championship which they won. On the 28th of August 2019, Sonny was named in New Zealand's 2019 Rugby World Cup squad. He saw less minutes in the tournament as he was mainly utilised as an impact player. The All Blacks would be unable to retain their crown again, finishing third. This marked the end of Williams Rugby Union career as he retired from international duty that day. Williams had been rumoured to make a second return to rugby league for some time and was linked with a move to the British rugby league team Toronto Wolfpack. And on the 7th of November 2019, Sonny signed a contract worth up to $10 million. In a shocking twist of fate, after just a few months, Toronto Wolfpack announced their withdrawal due to financial constraints enforced by the pandemic. Subsequently, the injury ravaged Sydney Roosters paid Williams $150,000 to play the last four rounds of the competition in finals in an attempt to complete a hat-trick of premiership titles. Williams in his second stint with the Roosters would make it all the way to the semi-finals where he would lose in his final game against Canberra. And in early 2021, Williams announced his retirement via Instagram. But this isn't where things end as Sonny still hadn't finished business in the ring. On the 26th of June 2021, Williams beat Waikato Falafehi by unanimous decision and followed that up with a TKO against Barry Hall which was under a year later in March 2022. But that November, he endured his first loss of his career against Mark Hunt by TKO. With rumours of him returning to boxing, who knows what the future holds for Sonny Bill Williams but if there's one thing you've learned from this video it's that you can never write off a possible return. 
Sonny Bill Williams' legacy extends far beyond his achievements in rugby and boxing. Though his impact on rugby is undeniable, perhaps more importantly, Sonny's philanthropism is something to be admired. As an ambassador for UNICEF since 2015, he's dedicated to making a positive impact on the world. From the young boy who dreamed of being a rugby star to the global icon he is today, Sonny Bill Williams' journey is a remarkable story of talent, dedication and heart. He's shown us that's not just about what you achieve, but how you achieve it. Though Sonny's career may be filled with accolades, it's his journey, his values and his unwavering commitment that truly define the man he is today. But what do you think about Sonny Bill Williams? Would you consider him to be a rugby legend? Put your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe. With that all said and done, it's been your boy John Talks Rugby and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on screen now to see how these players pulled off the greatest solo performances in rugby history. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.